and the best speaker, Mark, uh, your time was five to seven minutes. You were six minutes and 52 seconds. Awesome. When you established the mirror, you said, and a mirror on the wall. And I, I would, you know, mirror, mirror at my crotch, how do I take it up and <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that down, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so move the mirror up in front of your face, put on the wall. I, this is ridiculous, but Dopey, you, you said Dopey had uh, several odds. Dopey doesn't speak. It's the first time you've mentioned him in this speech. So there's this whole, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, wait a second, Dopey doesn't talk about it. He, he, and I missed where you went after that. So you can either introduce him as a Toastmaster earlier because he got over it through Toastmasters, or use a different dwarf. You got five others to choose from. And kudos to you for remembering Bashful. That's the one everybody forgets. The, spe the screen was creeping, according to Vesher. I absolutely agree. When you're practicing the speech, do you go into a place where you can let go? Or are you practicing at home and you don't want to disturb the kids while they're watching TV or something like that? Be sure that you get into a space that's big enough that represents where the contest is going to be and give yourself over to the screen because if you do a half screen, ah, it's creepy, right? right? So, and if you find that, you know, I've lost my voice a little bit because I've been yelling a lot today. If you find that that might happen to you when you give the speech, then do something other than a scream. It, it can be the cackle, your cackle's great, something like that. But if you can't do the scream and do it, give yourself over to it completely, then find something else that's going to be equally good. Uh, are you going to give the speech in a suit? And the answer is yes, of course. You're going yes. to wear a suit and tie when you go up to be in the division contest because you want to win. Practice giving the speech in your suit now. Even though you end up with a sweaty collar or whatever like I do, get used to it because you may find that it impedes the way you move when you, when you finally get up here to, to give the speech. And it changes something about your speech and makes you lose. So that would be that. And then, wear a suit. That's it. Well, first of all, I thought it was incredibly creative. I really did. I thought it was a really good combination of things, and I think oh, there were a lot of surprises in terms of which dwarfs did the evaluation. So I actually, I really enjoyed it. I would say you have a good start on the staging with uh, with the queen over here and Snow White over there. I think the two people you need to work on staging are Doc and the narrator. Because I think, you know, if you stage those two, I think that'll, I mean, because I didn't find a problem with the flow of the storyline, but in terms of if you stage the narrator and you stage Doc, because Doc was sometimes facing this way, sometimes facing that way, and then, and my Doc were the narrator at that point. So if you stage those two and give them their space or their direction to turn in, you know, if you always keep Snow White angled this way and Doc angled that way or something like that, that might work for you. Um, and I like the conclusion, <laughs> actually, because I think it was a good way to put, make, make sure you had those three points in it, like what Rich was saying. I would say don't take out those other two. I think they're incredibly important. But you know, sometimes if you're told to give five takeaways and you're kind of struggling with the last two. I thought it was a very humorous way to make sure that you hit those three points. So, good job. One quick one? Yeah. Ten seconds? Yeah, Ten seconds. I was sitting here thinking of what, what the speech is missing. And I think it's missing bringing in the audience. You have, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to bring this, the, the speakers that are most successful in competitions, people who involve the audience in some way. So think about it. You could do the, the hi, oh, and get the, the audience some way. singing with you, something like that. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say about the VP uh, thing, I also kind of felt like it was funny, but it kind of made me think, uh-oh, is this going to be a political speech? And so maybe if you want to stick with the Toastmasters theme, maybe it might be worth leaving out that because you sort of are making an environmental statement kind of partway through the speech, but that wasn't like the main theme of the speech and it didn't really continue through the end, so it might be distracting. So speech, something to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.